Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. About a year ago we got two new functions in the F16C VIP and VRP. Visual initial point and visual reference point and I figured it's time to cover these in a situation. We have a target that's well hidden in a forest, it's a bunch of trucks. It's a dynamic target, it's not static like a building, it could move every few hours. Therefore we have a secret JTAC hidden here who's spying on the target and relaying their coordinates to us. Today everyone's going to be on the same coalition so no one shoots us down as it's just a training exercise. Importantly there is SAM coverage in the area, there's a Hawk site here that will be covering the whole area so we can't go up high and use our T-pods to find the target, we have to completely rely on a low level English ingress and information from the JTAC to drop bombs on the target. We simply won't have time flying at low level and high speed to visually find the target. So it's really important to say that a real mission like this would be flown via an IP, an initial point, which is going to be about 10 miles from the target. Real missions are flown with IPs first because it allows you to control the direction from which the attack is made. And secondly, the IP would usually be placed on a known static location, a building, an area, or something that doesn't move, a dam. And that's because the IP doubles up as a method of pre-calibrating our navigation system. The navigation system always has a certain amount of error in it, and it's very important to have it perfectly calibrated a few miles before you drop your bomb. And that's because the type of bombing we're going to be doing here, the accuracy relies 100% on the accuracy of our navigation system. So, in this case, our IP is a large factory. The factory will never move. That is what we're going to calibrate our navigation system to on our ingress. Therefore, that's our initial point. The VRP and VIP methods of attack will allow us to first navigate to the initial point, then calibrate our nav system to that initial point, then navigate to and drop bombs on the target. And they do it in different ways. So, I've got two planes here set up. This is VIP. In this case, we have a steer point, steer point 2, set to the known location of the initial point. And then we offset from that steer point a radial, a distance, and an elevation provided by our roleplay JTAC here to the target. And that's where our bombs will drop. VRP method, this guy here, does it the other way round. Instead, he sets a steer point directly on the target, again provided by the JTAC, and he references the position of the initial point in terms of a radial and a range from the target. So he'll reference from here back to here, and that's how he references the initial point. So two different ways of doing the same thing. VIP starts here. It has steer point one here, which is not a tactical steer point. It's just a steer point to get us heading towards the right direction. It has steer point two here set at the initial point, And that's all we have so far. Each aircraft has a couple of bombs and let's go. In we go. So first I need to pause and there'll be a lot of pausing today, obviously, because we need to set the jet up. So let's set up our VIP. We go to list and we have VIP here. So three VIP to target it's now asking for the steer point that the target is going to be offset from bearing from that steer point to the target the range and its elevation it's going to be referenced in this case from the IP which is steer point two so dobber down to enter dobber down next bearing in degrees decimal from the IP, which is this known position here, to the target. So this is going to be simulating the JTAC telling us this information. And the way we do it is we click on that tool there and we go there as detailed as we can. Drag a right mouse button over here to the target. Right, if we look there, we can see that it is 254 degrees so it's true it's not magnetic we enter true into the system for 9.70 nautical miles 254 decimal zero enter dobber down range 9 decimal 7 nautical miles enter 
9.7 nautical miles. And the elevation, whoops, we forgot. Remember, we're bombing 100% from the navigation system here. So the accuracy of the bomb drop is going to be based on the information we give it. If I just hover my mouse over the target, look at the top left of the screen, 16 feet of elevation. Again, we're simulating the JTAC giving this information. So 16 feet enter done next we need to activate this vip so doba back to the top press m select and this is really important to remember it's now activated it's now a thing we've now told the system where the target is in relation to our initial point steer point two next pull up point so if i doba right or sequence an associated pull-up point. The whole idea of this type of ingress is we fly as low as we can to keep ourselves safe. And we want to specify when it's safe to pull up and attack the target because obviously we don't want to drop our bombs at 50 feet. We need a, a couple of hundred feet. So same thing, dobber down. Which steer point is it relevant to or reference to? Steer point two, obviously the initial point. The bearing from that to the pull up, well, it's going to be, I'm going to put it in line with the target. So 254, it's just the easiest way of doing it. You don't have to do that, obviously. Uh, enter the range from the IP to the pull up point. Well, let's have it a couple of miles shy of the target. So not 9.7, but 7.7. Enter. So two miles from the target will be asked to pull up. And the elevation, um, I'm not 100% sure what it would be at that point. So a safe estimate is 16 feet again. Okay, that's our pull-up point set. And again, we need to activate it. You must not forget to do that. Okay, let's sequence back to uh, target and make sure that's turned on. And it is right, all done and set up. We can now dob up return. So next, air to ground mode, check. Uh, master arm on check set up bombs we're going to be dropping in all cases here in ccrp and our air to ground radar will of course default on this left screen and that's very useful we can go over some interesting navigation here so first we are set to steer point one sorry i should have shown you that uh, steer point one is selected and you can see that that is steer point one there if i increment to steer point two which is the initial point. We now have two references regards steer point two. We have the IP here in our nav site selector. That is showing where the actual factory is, where the initial point is. And we have the actual target offset from that. If we press here, it's out here, slightly off the edge of the scope. That is where the actual target is. I think we'll default to the IP uh, regards steer point two right we now need to just fly the mission so let's increment back to steer point one let's follow the mission through steer point one all right let's go follow the basic symbology to get to the steer point it's currently a distance of 2.8 nautical miles and there's not much to do other than just speed time up one mile and that's it we've not got automatic steer point incrementing on so it won't go to the next point automatically so we'll increment ourselves manually to steer point two okay it's going to guide us to our ip uh, so what we're going to do is turn left and look for a diamond on the ground which will be our ip and of course it's going to be over the factory there right i'm going to pause now what we need to do next is to update our nav system and we need to ensure that our hud here is sense of interest so we make sure it's got a star next to it and it has as you can see but let's pretend it didn't so let me remove that if it didn't press d data management switch dms up ping and it's now soy all we've got to do now is when we overfly this point here or this visual reference here press once tms target management switch up now it's really important to get it absolutely perfect the accuracy of the rest of the mission is going to depend on how accurately we reference our nav system all right in we go so you can start to see why this is done. This is obviously more relevant in older aircraft with pure INS, non-GPS uh, systems, but it still has relevance. Right, concentrate. TMS in three, two, one, mark. All right, we now need to pause it there. We now need to uh, turn to our target so uh, it realizes that we've already overflown our ip and as you can see it's automatically switched from 
IP on our edge ground radar to target, which happens to be there, which is great. It's got a new distance for us of 9.4 nautical miles, and we'll follow the symbology uh, in terms of azimuth. So round we go. Oh, it's right there. Look at that. Okay, let's pause that there. Ping. Uh, we've got obviously our normal CCRP symbology. So this is our azimuth steering line. This is our timing cue, our velocity vector. But most importantly, the square or the dot in the middle of the square shows a represented position of our target. Annoyingly, right over that is this circle, and that shows our pull-up cue. It's right over it because we put it in line with the target. And that's kind of annoying for showing this video, so why don't we offset on purpose, just to show that we can separate the two now. All right, just a few degrees off. Let's take my head back in a bit. And you can see now we've, we've separated them a bit. So we're going to fly now. And in reality, we'd be flying super low, I suppose, because we don't want to get shot down by Sam. So why don't we go and do that a bit more realistically? Okay, so we've got to fly now to the circle, which is our pull-up queue. It's a three-dimensional point on the ground. Once we reach it, it will be obvious. And then we have to do our pull-up and then do normal CCRP bombing on the symbology. So you can see it's getting closer. Better speed up a bit not presenting ourselves to the SAM, but if I just pause it here, you can start to see, in this case, with SAM coverage, that for some reason you couldn't pacify, you would have to come in at low level, and you couldn't search for the target visually with your eyes, it's just too dangerous. So you may have to use a system like this that would ensure that you could hit the target first time without going around for a second pass. It's just a use case of it. Right, anyway, um, I'm pause if we don't run out of fuel. That's the pull-up point there. Start pulling up just a few hundred feet. Push and hold weapon release. Of course, it's just normal CCRP symbology at this point. Let the timing cue fall. And you can see, of course, I've gone off a bit. Yeah, maybe a bit high. Okay, bomb away. I can actually pause there because uh, I'm not actually going to get shot at. And uh, that's not too bad. So everything here, boom. Okay, in fact, that was literally to the foot perfect. Everything here was depending on the accuracy of the JTAC sending the offset information of these guys here from the IP, which is 10 miles away. So that showed how accurate we got it by putting that bomb genuinely in that position. Also, how accurately I overflew the target and re-referenced my nav system. That's what decided how accurate that bomb was going to be. It doesn't know where the trucks are. It just knows where the data is that you entered into the system. Now we're going to do VRP if I just reset. Right, so... This jet is set up the same, except it has one steer point here, a rough ingress point, and its second steer point is not on the IP, because in this case, for some reason, it doesn't know where that IP is. The JTAC's going to have to tell it. Um, it does know where the bad guys are this time, and it's got a steer point located on those bad guys. So what we need to do this time is reference the IP from the bad guys. It's just one, again, use case of VRP. So if I just do that there it's obviously the reciprocal of what we saw last time which is going to be uh, uh, my maths 0744 9.7 miles and the tech combine is at an altitude of 23 feet right let's get that set up you can kind of probably see where this is going now so list the rp is nine okay we want it relevant to which steer point to steer point two which is on the target to enter uh, IP bearing from the targets is the reciprocal of 254, which is, of course, 74 decimal zero. Enter. Range. Weirdly, it's in feet. Don't know why it is. Uh, there are 6,076 feet per nautical mile. So 9.7 times 6,076 feet is 58937 feet. Enter, and the elevation was 23 feet, uh, obviously above mean sea level is how this works. Um, enter, and we need to activate it. It's the biggest thing you forget. Uh, activate. All right, um, now dobber sequence to do the pull-up. Um, so relevant to steer point two, target bearing, just to keep things simple. Uh, seven four decimal zero enter a uh, range is going to be oh let me have a think so this is referencing from the target so i want two miles so two times six thousand and seventy six is uh on twelve thousand between friends enter elevation of this point i don't know 16 feet will do enter activate it double check we've got the other one activated and we have, and here, and there, air to ground, whoops, let's get back, set it back to default, CCRP, 
Again, I don't want any visual referencing of the actual target here. I want the nav system to do it all for me. Master arm is on. Just, uh, I like to sanity check it just to make sure that everything seems to work. So, step point one looks about right. Step point two, uh, we have the target, which is over here to our left, and the IP, which is there on that river bend. That all looks about right. Uh, oh, oh, note that it's RP now, not IP. It's the reference point, but in this case, it is the IP as well. Uh, that's it, guys. So, I'm going to go back to step point one and fly the mission and pause. I will put this mission, if you want to try it yourself, viewers, in the video description. Download the mission and uh, you can go and try exactly the same thing. Down we go. Right, we've reached the steer point. Uh, upgrade manually to steer point two. Turn. We're going to look for our IP. And there is our diamond, and you can see everything's working nicely. Right, we've got to make sure it's soy, which it is. I'm going to do our overfly. Team us up. Boop, and turn to target. Whoops. There. This time, I'll just go straight to the target. Oops, some funny flying there. That'll get me kicked out of USAF for sure. Okay. Double check. We're now referencing the target, and we are. Range, seven miles. Go nice and low so we don't get shot down by the SAM. Pull up. Push no weapon release. Oh, it looks like I might miss this time. No, yeah, it might be quite good. No, it should be good because it's, I put the steer point in the right place, didn't I? Pop bombs away. Typically, I've gone a bit skew if, but that's just me, I'm afraid. Speed time up. Ach! Achtung, achtung! Not bad. Right in the middle. Right, that's my rendition of VIP and V. RP viewers, there's one more we'd like to show, which is offset aim point one and two, which is a slightly simplified version, but for some reason we can't get them working at the moment, so we'll come back to that. I hope that was useful and bye bye.